non Markovian systems. <laughs> a lot of non? <laughs> That's the first thing. <laughs> Um, thank you, everybody. Thank you to organize this nice conference. Uh, yeah, that is the topic of my talks. Um, yeah, I will start uh, to say some motivation why we are talking, uh, study uh, the mean first pass time. So, as a first thing, uh, quite a lot of natural system can be a then rescale uh, study in a uh, uh, one deep potential, uh, uh, in particular, as a barrier crossing, in particular, some rare events uh, as chemical reaction and protein folding. And uh, uh, another um, motivation is that uh, normal metal systems are, are, are not at equilibrium, and in particular, from uh, that um, article from Bustamante, where they are um, studying some uh, folding of proteins, they, um, they saw some delay in uh, that folding, and in particular, that delay time is exponential. So here, from the dots are the data, and uh, the curve is some exponential fit, and from the dashed line is the line that they expect if the system is fine at the equilibrium. So I will introduce my uh, system, as we already uh, hear a little bit <laughs> during today. I will use a general general uh, Langevin equation, where we know that the random force is correlated with the kernel. And in particular, I will use a um, um, decay exponential kernel, where gamma is the friction and tau is the memory time of our system. And uh, um, my potential, as I say uh, in the introduction, it will be a double well symmetric uh, potential. But as I say in my title, we are interested to study um, systems that are out of the equilibrium. And to do that one, we violate the fluctuation dissipation theorem. And for that reason, we use two different functions, tau v on uh, gamma v on gamma r. The function have the same, uh, um, yeah, the function, no, it doesn't work, okay. The function have the same uh, um, shape but two different memory time. And when we are out of the equilibrium, tau v is different to r. Why we change only the tau and uh, we don't scale, for example, the friction coefficient? Because we know that every time that we rescale the friction coefficient, we can always redefine easily uh, effective temperature that take account of that uh, difference and bring back our system at the equilibrium. So starting from that um, generalized Langevin equation, we um, Fourier transform um, the autocorrelation function. And here we introduce approximation. So we will not consider our double well um, potential, but simple um, quadratic potential. So we Fourier transform, we calculate the autocorrelation function. And we observe that the uh, two memory times that we are interested in, tau v and tau r, are um, in function of gamma v and gamma r that are in our uh, final expression. In fact, we put all the terms that we know inside and we arrive at that expression. That expression, it looks a little bit ugly, but we can rescale and find some effective parameters. So um, we go to rescale and uh, we, um, we call the new parameter as a new effective friction, new uh, mass, uh, um, effective mass, and new um, effective temperature that is inside beta f. That's uh, the effective parameter that we, um, we investigate. And it's nice um, at the beginning to see how that effective parameter are changed uh, when we are in a non-Markovian system, because respect at our um, normal um, uh, uh, oscillating dampered, um, our oscillating uh, model, that's uh, effective parameter are already um, changed when we in introduce the memory. But our effective temperature is changed only when we are out of the equilibrium because it depends on the, uh, the two memory time, tau r and tau v. That's uh, uh, C1 is uh, only a constant that we will fit with our simulation to take account uh, that the uh, model 
So the analytical calculation that we are doing, we are doing for a quadratic potential, but in our simulation we will use a double well potential. And in total we will have uh, uh, three uh, constant parameters. Um, yeah, yeah, the equilibrium, as I already say, beta effective is equal. Uh, the, the temperature effective is equal at our temperature of the system at the beginning. So um, minimize the uh, denominator of, auto, uh, of the autocorrelation function, we study the two limits uh, of the gamma effective. So we have an uh, expression for low friction limits and an expression for high friction limit. As uh, I said before, also in that two cases, we will add some um, uh, constant that we will fit. So now that we know the, our um, effective parameter, we can come back to uh, uh, a Markovian system and we can find to, um, so our goal is to looking for expression of mean first passage time at non Markovian and non equilibrium. And to do that, we start from the Markovian system where we know that the, the, memory, current, uh, the memory time is equal to zero. And we know the two exact expression from Kramers um, for high friction and uh, low friction. In the plot, uh, we see in, uh, with the red curve uh, the two limits uh, that are there show. With the, la the uh, yellow line is Melchkov uh, um, formula. That's a little bit complicated formula. I would like to see something uh, more easy, and uh, with the star, our simulation. The dashed black line is, uh, the, is a formula that we obtain where um, simply we sum the, uh, the two limit and we add, add uh, um, intermediate limit, um, the uh, cross cover uh, Markovian term. Uh, that's uh, the other two memory time that I use in my system, that are the inertia and diffusion time that I use to rescale my time. So uh, starting from the Markovian system, we can go to um, uh, check the non-Markovian system where we introduce, uh, um, instead of the normal uh, mass and friction, our new um, effective mass and uh, um, effective friction. And we obtain this formula. Here still we are at equilibrium. So tau v is equal to tau r. So we have only one memory time. For that, the beta um, uh, coefficient, it doesn't change. The temperature um, doesn't change. And we observe as that formula uh, fit, um, fit very good with our data. Uh, in particular, that is the expression when uh, um, we consider the term m effective over gamma effective. And uh, at the end, the um, effective um, uh, friction uh, at the high friction limits we can consider as gamma because fitting uh, the third uh, parameter, so C3, we observe that has a very small value. Um, so uh, I would like to point uh, another, um, a couple of things. So yes, the first thing is that equation that we found out uh, from analytic calculation is have, has exactly the same shape of equation that was found in a more heuristic way from Julian Kapler in um, uh, XPhD in our group. And the other part is that that term, the negative term, um, that's the last term uh, um, that's come from uh, omega uh, um, mass effective over gamma effective, um, is a negative term that I we would like to don't have. So to avoid any problem to obtain uh, um, negative time. And we sum with the high friction um, term for that, we have this expression one over, and that term is the responsible of the speed up regime. So the regime where the memory brings uh, um, the, the memory um, brings the memory uh, the mean first pass the time be sl uh, be smaller respect the Markovian limit. Okay, that's are the parameter that I use for um, for that line. So um, now that we found an uh, expression for the non-Markovian system, we will go to consider the non-Markovian system as non-equilibrium. 
And also in this case, we consider the two limits when we are in the low friction and the high friction limits. And we observed that at the end, we found in, uh, in some limits that are um, true in our system, that the two expressions have more or less the same uh, behavior. And for that, we will all introduce one new uh, effective temperature that, uh, that's better than equilibrium, that is equal to tau r over tau v square. To check if that parameter exactly um, uh, is a good parameter for our system, we will consider the position distribution, uh, um, the, the position velocity distribution. In that plot, I show uh, the position distribution. So in A, there is the position distribution from our simulation, where in B, I rescalate for that effective parameter, and in C and D, I plot that effective parameter respect tau r, uh, respect uh, tau v. And we observe that in the star, with the star, we, uh, we plot exactly the uh, rescaled parameter, and all the lines that um, describe, that show the three different functions are perfect agreement with the data and also perfect agreement with them. And we do the same things for the velocity distribution and we found the same, uh, as we expected, uh, the same result. So at the end, we insert that uh, beta non-equilibrium inside our formula and uh, we observe as the line that show uh, the formula are qualitative, qualitatively uh, describe our simulation. And the um, nice things to observe is in that case, we are not only to uh, modify the constant after the Arrhenius term, we modify the Arrhenius term. And in particular, uh, they have a exponential, uh, sorry, the exponential behavior, so when uh, we increase tau r, we observe a very uh, large increase of the mean first passage time. And then the same result that uh, I show in the motiv motivation at the very beginning. So in conclusion, um, we found out some effective uh, parameter, friction, mass, and temperature, solving the non-equilibrium, non-Markovian non harmonic oscillator. Um, we found out a formula for the mean first pass time where the non-equilibrium affects strong, strongly the, uh, the time because it's changing the exponential part and for that's the Arrhenius uh, constant. And in conclusion, we observe that that's the effective temperature describe the position and the velocity uh, for a system, um, for a barrier class system re also really far from the equilibrium. Thanks. Thank you very much for the talk. Mm -hmm. Are there any questions in the audience? Or online? Right. So I have a question about yeah. the... Uh, so generally with these, with these problems, when you study these mean first passage times, uh, often they turn out to be quite untypical for the I within the distribution. So my question is, uh, can you say something about higher moments or about how the distribution uh, changes when you increase memory in the system? Um, yeah, in particular, yes, because also if you watch the trajectory, that is, uh, we immediately see how the memory and uh, non-equilibrium go uh, to, to change also the, the distribution. But yeah, um, we can see, but uh, we didn't study that part. Yeah. Qualitatively, does it spread or does it sharpen? Or? So, uh, I, so, um, so we, we observe from the distribution that I show how they change, but always we can rescale it. So at the end, we know how they, they change the, the distribution. Okay. Of, the, of the first passage times. Mm, yeah, I think also we, we can find out, I think, a whole chain. So I, I didn't check uh, precisely, but I think uh, it's possible to observe. Yeah. I think that is the second part or next step that also we have to investigate uh, after that.
Yeah, so uh, you showed that there is a regime where memory can speed up the barrier crossing, yeah. right? But that wasn't the equilibrium case, if I'm... Yeah, that's okay. the equilibrium case, And yeah. if you go to the non-equilibrium case, I assume that you can, like, enhance this effect. Have you looked at this? Uh, were you interested in that? Um, so, n not, because, to be honest, uh, uh, we, we thought that the most interesting part was that uh, really we changed that Arrhenius effect, and uh, we yeah, immediately yeah, sure. see that... Um, because we more or less we observe more how the non equilibrium brings a higher uh, level. But sure, probably here we see because if we observe the scale, uh, probably uh, when we are a smaller scale, we observe also the speed up. Some yeah, yeah, speed no, up, I was wondering uh, if you could find a regime where you have like a very fast. No, I, uh, I, don't, I don't think so, to be honest. Okay, uh, okay, okay, yeah. thank you. Because if we observe also here, it's uh, it's quite interesting, but it's quite a small regime. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, yeah, probably, but I don't think that it's at the end it's really uh, important as a factor respect, uh, the effect that we see has they really uh, modified. I don't know. That's uh, is my impression, but I don't know. <laughs> uh, there is a question online. So I'm in just going to read it yeah. out. In principle, you could map your system to a Markovian one in an extended state space. What would that predict for the mean first passage time? Um, yeah, so in, in Jira, to be honest, I don't know. But um, uh, yeah, I always remap with some uh, mapping, uh, but uh, predict. Uh, so we already know which is the, normally that's the point, we compare how that's the mean first time uh, the non-Markovian and uh, the non-equilibrium change in respect at the Markovian time. So that's, I think it's really a, uh, yeah, we can predict how quite change the, the parameter that we are in our, in the Markovian. I think that's uh, more or less the idea. I don't know precisely. Did this address the question? I don't think so. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> um, okay, in that case, thank you very much. <laughs>